Hi guys and welcome back to Adam's Aquatics. Today's Tuesday, so we're here for another vlog style video. There's been a lot of goings on in the fish room this week, some ups, some downs, um, some really, really low downs, but some really, really, really high ups. So um, let's just kick on and let's get going. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the worst um, news of the fish room. So um, unfortunately, um, my female Borrelia opal jumped. Um, <laughs> I was absolutely gutted. I went to work on Sunday morning, uh, Sunday afternoon, sorry, uh, and I come uh, back late on Sunday night. Um, so obviously the lights were off, so I didn't bother looking at any of the tanks. Uh, and then Monday morning when I came out to do my weekly water changes, um, I found her uh, on the floor. I don't know how she got out of this lid, to be honest. Um, it's not tight, but she must have just been spooked and jumped. Um, really, really gutted. Um, especially considering the fact this wasn't going to be their, their final tank. Um, they were showing signs of breeding as well. Um, I'm just absolutely gutted when it comes to that. You know, I've never had a fish jump before um, and it's really something that's really upset me um, and something that I'm really sad about. Um, but it's something that I'm just going to move on from um, and something that I've learned from to make sure that the lids are tightly secured. Um, I, I don't really know what I can do because um, I obviously cut these acrylic lids um, and I'm, I'm just going to leave it and just see what happens, to be honest. Um, this guy's now on his own. Um, I'm hoping that I can get another female for him or two females because I'm actually finding out the trios work a bit better when it comes to pistos. So last week, we obviously talked about what the plans were for the black rams. Um, you know, they weren't working out well together in the tank on their own. So I made a decision as to what I was going to do. It was a snap decision. I did it today. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm happy, liking it or not, but I'm going to live with it now. So I moved these guys to the um, main display tank. Um, with Kaya and with Herc and with uh, Aphrodite, wherever she is, uh, and with all the rest of this community fish. Um, there's the female down there with Herc. Um, he seems to be protecting her, which is quite nice. Um, there's uh, Achilles down there, um, and he seems to be settling in fine. Um, I've moved quite a lot of their decorations into this tank as well, just to give a bit more cover um, and a bit more hiding spaces, because I think that will kind of diffuse the aggression a little bit. Um, I also think that this size tank will actually do well for those guys, and potentially we'll get some breeding between um, uh, him uh, being Achilles and one of the females, wherever it is, Kaya, who's shown some really nice colour since he's gone in, or with Pandora, his original female. Um, I'm not too sure, but um, we're just going to wait and see, see what happens. Um, I don't foresee there being any issues when it comes to these guys being in this tank. Um, the tank, the temperature is a bit lower than it was in their tank. Um, they were at 29, this is 27, but they seem to be settling in fine. Um, they've been in here for about three hours now. Um, there's no aggression between any of the fish. Um, I don't find that anyone's being harassed by anyone. Like if you see these two, just have a look at each other. There's no, there's no fighting. There's no showing signs of aggression. Like they're just sizing each other now. Um, and actually, I'm really happy with these guys. I think that's probably the best decision. Um, you know, when it comes to those guys. It frees up another tank on the breeding rack um, for another pair of pistos. Um, especially since like, I, I find that rams are a bit too difficult for me, um, whether it comes to the temperature or whatever, because they've obviously got different parameters to the rest of the fish room. Um, you know, and that's probably something that I'm just gonna have to learn with and um, potentially when we move to the next fish room, look at a different setup. But I'm quite happy to just concentrate on the pistos, to be quite honest. Um, it's something that I really enjoy and you know, it's something that I can really specialise in and show you guys um, what I do when it comes to these guys. So we're down here at the Black Chain Aquarium. Um, he's doing really well. Uh, I'm really happy with him. Um, but the uh, peep that's in here with him is starting to show a bit of aggression towards other fish. Um, now, I'm not sure whether I'm going to move peep for out and back into that little tiny cube. Um, he started his life, obviously, in the, um, the tank that the... Um, also scold fryer growing out in and um, potentially once they've grown out he might go back into there I'm not really too sure and um, if I tap on the glass we will almost certainly see um, one of them come out you see you see his aggression there he's starting to get really aggressive and finicky towards a lot of the other fish in the tank now there's the female black chin and um, she's doing really well um, and the male's doing really well as well and um, I'm really happy with their progress now here he is there I'm obviously now decided um, with my current um, thought process on Epistos. Um, I'm gonna go into trio with these guys, so I'm, I'm uh, looking for another female. Um, I've got um, my guy down at Elite Exotics looking for another female for me. Um, and then hopefully we should get some breeding out of these guys. Um, I'm gonna move them over to a breeding tank um, shortly once one becomes available. Um, and yeah, really, really happy with these guys. Um, I think they're an amazing fish. Uh, and I think that they're really enjoying a lot of this cover that I've got going on here with this really broadleaf saw plant. Um, 
again, I'm really happy with this, uh, and it's it's helping me to um, look at different types of pistos. You know, we've obviously bred um, Cacatoides, and we've bred um, McMaster Eye, both varieties we've got in the fish room, um, and now we're obviously trying to focus on something a bit different. So that's kind of the plan with these guys right now. So I'm gonna show you something that's really cool. So I obviously built these caves here, uh, and I've got one of my Abiaxis females taking up residence in it. Um, really enjoying these two as a pair at the moment, both females and watching their interactions with each other is quite funny to be quite honest. Uh, you've got one up there and one up here uh, and they're fighting out for dominance. Um, and hopefully once we get a male, um, we'll start to see um, some breeding action, especially with a trio. Uh, and I've, I don't really know about this revelation to be honest. I just think the trios work a bit better. Um, helps to diffuse aggression I find. Um, and that's something that I really, really think is important when it comes to the more aggressive epistos. So, um, what have we done with the tank that uh, the Black Rounds were in? So I dumped a load of this spiderwood in here. Um, I dumped a load of um, leaf litter, which is what all this mulmy looking stuff is. Um, I put a new gel fern in there. This gel fern at the back here was dying because of the temperature. Now the temperature is much lower now. And you might be able to see my Elizabethy red male. Now I've moved him out of um, the uh, bigger tank just because he's on his own at the moment. And it's kind of a bit of a waste when it comes to um, a breeding tank, uh, one of the bigger breeding tanks uh, for him to just be on his own. So I've moved him um, in here. Um, he seems to be settling in great. And he can actually see uh, Big Osiris in the next tank across. So I'm seeing a lot more of his color and a lot more of him, um, which is really cool. Let me see if the camera will focus on him. There we go. So yeah, he's uh, showing off a lot more. And it also makes Osiris show off a lot more, which is really cool. Now Osiris is um, still recovering from uh, what looks like ick on his back fins. Now, um, I've now put a heater in and turned the temperature up and added some aquarium salt. And um, that should be the final bit that kind of helps to um, kill off that infection. Now, as you can see, there is absolutely nothing wrong with him health-wise. He's still in breeding form. And, um, you know, you can see him with his female um, showing off and so I'm not really worried about him. Yeah. The more thing that I'm worried about is just getting it gone. Um, and that is obviously why um, I've now uh, chosen the salt and um, heat method, which uh, is known throughout the world to be something that will cure it really quickly. So um, we're gonna leave this for a week now and hopefully it'll clear it up nice and quickly. So I tried all the medications, um, I tried a double dose of um, the ick medication and it didn't work. Um, so I'm just going to try this more of a herbal remedy, which is obviously, you know, salt and, and heat. Um, and hopefully that'll work. Right, um, it doesn't seem to be growing anymore, and it hasn't spread to his female. Um, so the, the parasites, once they leave his body, seem to be dying in the water. Um, so the only thing I'm really worried about is now just getting it off his body so that he can get back to um, basically looking normal. It's more of an aesthetic thing now than it is anything else. Um, and I think a week, he'll be back to normal. So this Agazizi I double red female uh, is certainly really, really well with Percy. Um, and I'm really happy with their progress together as a, as a, as a pair. Now, um, like I said before, we're looking for more females um, because uh, I feel like that helps to spread the aggression. Uh, and I'll tell you the reason why, um, why I can't put this um, idea very shortly. So last but by no means least, um, today I went to get some salt from uh, a local fish shop, not the one that I normally go to, but another one. Uh, and um, I saw some pistos in there. Now they never they never sell pistos ever, um, which was really weird for me. And um, just never anything that I ever see in there. And that's obviously why I go to ED Exotics. But these guys, they had um, a trio of um, a pista grama a pandora or nisa and I, um, and I picked them up. Um, and they're really small, um, but they seem to be settling in fine to this Q tank. So let me show you now. So they're still in this Q tank with all of this algae. So here are two of the females. This one here. And this one here and this is the male now he's really small in comparison to the females which uh, worries me a little bit but um hopefully we can grow him on nice and quickly and this tank is planted enough and has enough hiding spaces and enough caves to kind of give him enough um space to run away and hide um if the females get a bit too boisterous for him now i've seen a bit of aggression when it comes to the three of them but it's been really good because uh, the females seem to be taking their aggression out on each other uh, and leaving him alone so you'll see these two kind of take each other on they're fighting for the dominant female. And I think they're probably fighting for um, who is gonna mate with the male. Now, you know, it's not something that we really want, aggression, but actually, if we're gonna have aggression, I'd rather it was taken out on the two females between each other than on uh, my male who 
is my only male and actually I would be genuinely concerned if they were taking it out on him because he probably wouldn't make it. So, as you can see with those three, they're really, really small. And that is why I keep saying in every video that I'm not prepared to sell any fish or move any fish on, not necessarily sell them, just move them on um, if they're small enough or you can't tell the sex. So I spent a good 25 minutes in the shop um, trying to make sure that out of the tank of probably about 12, that there was uh, two females and a male that I would um, identify as two females and a male. Uh, and I'm still not 100% sure that I've got that, um, which is a bit concerning. Um, but, you know, what can you do? Um, I'm pretty sure that I've got a male and two females. I'm 95% sure. And um, when they look at each other, you can tell that he's a male because he has blue throughout his body. Now the females are a completely yellow fish with black markings, really black markings over the face, whereas he doesn't look like that. So it's much easier to sex a fish <laughs> like Kratos, my Ben Shire. Now they're a very close relative each other, the Pandora and the um, Ben Shire or Inca 50. They, you know, they're very similar in genetics. Um, but obviously it's much easier to sex him due to the fact that if you look at his his uh, his top fins, you know, he's definitely a male. Like there's no if, buts or maybes about him. You know, that is a absolutely stunning male of his Tagar Ben Show. So this week there's going to be no fire update. Um, I don't really feel like I need to give you guys an update on these guys. They're just continuing to grow. And, you know, I'm really happy with their progress now. I'll show you again next week. I just don't feel like I need to give you guys the same things every single week. And I'm trying to spice things up and give you different views on different fish every week. Um, you know, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at adams.aquatics. And I will see you next time in the next video.